thanks again to Cameron as always to go over the agenda, the, the minutes, sorry, to, to circulate the minutes. For our agenda, we're gonna go over the agenda, approve the minutes, uh, I don't think we have any public comment, talk about the creative discourse um, proposal, um, and then check in about the stipend prog program and then the committee and committees, um, and then every everything else that we have time for and as, as is relevant. Um, anything else to change or add or whatever? Cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's have folks looked over the minutes already. Pull those up there in the okay. attachment for the one, the original one that I sent. Let's take a minute and read those over. Mm -hmm. Anyone want to make a motion to approve? I'll do that. Michael makes a motion to approve. Jeremy seconds. All yeah. in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Nice work. Um. So for the um. Consulting with creative discourse. I we I reached back out to Sue immediately after the last meeting. She got back to us like a week later. And then of course Cameron and I never responded or touched base on the proposal that they sent because I just dropped the ball. Um so Cameron, I don't know if you've had a chance to look it over and if you want to just like talk it over, um, kind of what your thoughts are. So I I guess I I couldn't understand what so they had that on the second page they basically have like two options of co-facilitators or a single facilitator but i i, I think it's really bizarre that the choices were for a multiracial team versus a single facilitator we don't have a unlimited amount of money so my first choice would be going to the single facilitator regardless i just think that that was just a weird i'm just saying it's a bizarre way to frame that but um, I don't know if we would need multiple people to help us review policy. So my immediate thought of, you know, being good stewards is to, you know, use only what we need. So that would be my one thought is that I think, I think we'd be okay with a cheaper option if y'all feel comfortable with that. I'm okay with that. I, I also wonder why we need five sessions does it is, am i the only one who wonders why we need five sessions i wouldn't mind just more set i i want to make sure we're doing this right i would mind all right um, five sessions and if uh this is too much we certainly have a lot of other equity work that we're trying to do mm -hmm. that i would like to hijack that time to talk mm -hmm. to them about okay and I just dropped in the chat what she put in her email too for context. Um, it's it's not like a hard pitch. It's just like building, you know, building relationships is important. And um, so it's probably more for their original proposal, it like was a, was a harder pitch. And now that we're gonna be using this more for reviewing the documents, it's probably less um, less critical for perhaps. But yeah, Helen, Jeremy, do you guys have any thoughts? Um, I think for this kind of targeted scope of work, I lean towards one facilitator, one consultant. I think I'm just going to trust that all their consultants are really capable, competent in this area. So I think given on given that it's 
we kind of went down primarily like camera needs some real support in the implementation and understanding how we're going to do this right. So I'm okay with the option one facilitator, one facilitator option. I think we could also ask if, if that's not enough, if we could always expand that, if they recommend that we expand that, right? Like if we're not getting, if they don't feel like we're getting what we need or we don't feel like we're getting what we need, we can always ask them to help broaden that scope and, and sort of invite other people to assist mm -hmm. and pay them more, you know? Yeah. Anything else in the proposal that like language changes or clarifications or anything like that? Are we ready to move forward with the option A with the option of expanding to more meetings or ex just expanding in general? All right. And I think we made the decision last meeting that we, so we don't need to make any decision this meeting, but just wanted to check in on it. So Cameron's going to circle back with Sue and get the paperwork signed for the mm -hmm. option A 1500 um, support for the rollout and implementation. That feels really exciting. That's like a big, big, big next step. <laughs> I feel like we've been kind of like turning our wheels a little bit and this is great. Um, hello, Carol. Hello, Lauren. Welcome. Um, we're on item um, six of our agenda now. Of we just talked about the um, the the consulting with creative discourse. Um, I, let me just pause there too. If there's any public comment, Carol, in particular, if there's try to create. Um, no, so, but I, I am uh, interested. I I let Cameron know that, um, and I think at our leadership team meeting that I'm interested in helping out with the work that's going forward around diversity, equity, and inclusion. So right. just keep that in mind. I'll, we're having a staff change soon, so <laughs> maybe not right away, but um, it, yeah, I'd love to help out with that. Cool. Great. Carol. Um. So yes, yeah, so I think our next thing is on the stipend program. And this is back, back to you, Cameron. <laughs> You've done all the work. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, our finance department, uh, as you all know, last week was um, town meeting week. And so the week in between our last meeting and this meeting was not Focus. focused yeah. on this. Yeah. I apologize. So <laughs> I still have pending asks to finance and to VLCT to talk about what insurance they think we would need or if there's any... I don't know, wor worry about uh, having someone as a paid staff versus just what we need. So I have a pending request um, about that. So uh, thank you for being patient. Last week was just not a good week to ask them to do anything, to be honest. So I will have more information on that piece by next meeting. But did you all take a moment to say budget pass? So we have our. Oh, money? yeah. Yay. Yay. We didn't do that. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. That was very exciting. <laughs> Everything passed, right? Yeah. Yeah. All the stuff we had in there. Um, and then we have the <laughs> survey um, discussion on the agenda here too. And I think maybe this is more just like Jeremy and Pellant and Lauren have it been like, or Lauren, you were on the call last week too. Uh, this the language in the survey we were going to circulate to um, Creative Discourse once we sign this agreement because they just like, we're like, we're not going to look this over until we have that, you know, agreement in place. And so if there was any other changes or updates or thoughts about that, um, we're also not gonna have that go live until the April, um, what am I trying to say? The April um, committee meeting. I need to pull that up. Again. Yeah, oh, and I don't have it pulled up either, so I can do it. We made a bunch of edit. Oopsies, that's not what I was looking to do. Um, made a bunch of edits like in the meeting, but I'm still needing to come up with the intro language as support. So.
This is like a community demographic hear... survey. Yeah. I feel like I can hear somebody's computer trying to think really hard. Right um, now. That's me. Sorry. Okay. It's on its way out. Oh, I'm sorry. The one thought I had as far as an addition would be to ask directly um, about interest in receiving a stipend. Yeah, that would be good. That could maybe be just like an additional question that doesn't tie to some of the things that we'd want to track before and after. Right. I would again like to advocate for uh, Latinx to be taken out of the oh, I designation. Don't I don't know a single person that identifies as Latino or Latina that agrees with that as a designation. I, that, how about that? I would like that to be language that we ask creative discourse what their thoughts are on because I've seen a lot of really conflicting. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Articles, studies, firsthand accounts. I do think it's something like 3% of people with Hispanic origin uh, use the term Latinx. So it's, it is very, yeah. Can we ask what the language is that people speak at, at home that's not English? Yeah. We have, it's interesting. So you remember I talked to the school about what they're, right. what, and it's interesting because the school has different languages that are most prevalent in their population versus like Montpelier at large. And then um, I had questions about the housing. I'm sorry, I'm just sort of, I feel like I'm, dominating this conversation. So I apologize. Keep going. Okay. I did have questions about the housing one. Um, could we maybe specify um, home also means like apartment if that, you know, cause I, I could see that tripping up some folks about um, home versus apartment. What do you mean? Yeah. And this is where I'm just like, so it says, what is, with this language. No, what type okay. of housing so do you live in? Yeah, no, it says, so what is, your housing, which is confusing. So I would say, what is your living situation? Oh, and then, got it, got it. And the next one. Yep. And then just say, assume, you know, assume this also applies to apartments because it says I rent my home and share it with family. We could say like house apartment or, you know, yep. put in a little preamble that says apartments also count. Because then it does ask what kind of housing you live in, which I think is important. The next one. Yeah. Um, we'll maybe just reverse the order. Yeah, that too. That would be easier, wouldn't it? Probably. And can make the change. And I know this is like a thing for these types of surveys is like <laughs> for these types of surveys in surveys, I know you're supposed to ask demographic information last because it like impacts how people respond. And so being like, what? Yeah. Like what of like the order I think does matter of like how, you know, for how people respond to the answers above. Like, I think it is a thing. Like if you ask people's race first, they like answer other, yeah, there's like some science about it. I'm making that up, but I'm not making it up. Like that is, there is science about it, but I'm like, I don't know which one goes first. And so um, I'm not sure if they'll know too and how much of an impact that'll make because these are all demographic questions, seems, you know, basically. And so, um, but just that was something I was like mindful of in, um, as I was trying to frame it. of like, what questions do I feel like would impact how I answer this and things.
Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. If no one else, I don't think. Though, I, I mean, I think some of the order of the questions, but you're right, they're all demographics questions. So I don't, I don't know if that would matter necessarily. Uh, we're intending to run this by creative discourse once we get our contract signed. Okay. Cool. So are we going to reverse the order of these two? These the type, type Yeah, type if you of... refresh it, you should be able to see the, if you refresh the page, you should be able to see the changes that I was just making on the call. Um, <coughs> sorry. And so then also on our agenda is pilot proposal. And I think what we decided last meeting, and I know I just looked over the notes like 10 minutes ago, um, but I think it was that we're just gonna do first come first serve. So be really explicit. We have $30,000 to work with. Once that funding runs out, we're done for the year. Um, but uh, yeah, just being really explicit about that, but not uh, having it be for specific committees or for, um, for certain, you know, having any type of um, means testing or anything. Mm -hmm. Cool. Was there anything else for that pilot proposal bullet point? No, I just, you know, I included that in the agenda just to make sure if anyone had thoughts um, since last time about that. Um, I think uh, packaging all of this will be important. Um, I can work with Shana to sort of write out all of this, if that's okay with everyone that we can talk about next time. And then it's sort of a package that we're handing over to creative discourse instead of, um, can you review this? And then can you review this kind of thing? And, and we're hopeful that they will give us some feedback so that we can use this for the committee on committees meeting. Hand it out, is that the idea? <coughs> okay. Will we be, um looking for any additional feedback or oversight from council once we get our kind of package finalized lauren what's your sense on that i think that's a good idea all right i just got pulled away by a call is our proposal has to go back yeah i think presenting to council if i'm understanding um because there was definitely a lot of questions mm -hmm. um, i think that would be great I don't, I don't like think after the committee and committee's call, just like the once everything's finalized, or you think getting their feedback, I'm not fully totally understanding. Yeah. So I, th I think before would be good. I think, what is it, April 6th, Lauren? Am I hallucinating? I don't know when meetings are. I plan a day ahead at this point. Um, April 13th, there's a meeting. Uh, was there when they're meeting? 11th, April 11th? April the 11th is the, is the, Committee to meet, committee on committee meeting. Yeah. Right. So do we want to have a meeting before that? I think it would be important to present it to council before it goes to the committee on committees. I know we've had that time held for a while. What are y'all's thoughts on pushing it back a week to like the 18th? Was that like pushing what back? The the sorry, the committee on committees. So that you have chance to go, you have a chance words to go to council on April 13th to tell them what the plan is and how you want to communicate it out. I would actually prefer that, but that's just. The 18th is Easter, Passover, tax day, everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that seems like, a, it's like the holidays on my calendar, like whoop, it's every, everything's <laughs> happening. With it. Okay. Uh, is there some version even that could be sent before the March 23rd council meeting? I know that's tight. To me, I would be worried about getting it signed, getting the agreement signed, then getting the package together and creative discourse reviewing it before the 23rd. I would hate to 
tell them to impose a really tur- quick turnaround for them, to be honest with you. And we think, think April 6th is too short of a turnaround between the city council meeting and- No, the, f- the first council meeting is the 13th. After the 23rd. It's yeah. the 23rd and then the 13th. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, it's so always, it always gets sort of bumped up when there's um, five Wednesdays in a month and there's five Wednesdays in March. Oh. I mean, is there a way on the 11th to, if some of this we were kind of rolling out, but if it's like, it's also gathering input. Like, I wonder if this is like, it's still a work in progress. We're working with creative discourse. We're going to bring your input, creative discourse's input, like to council and finalize a plan. So it's like more like an earlier stage in the process of like, because you had talked about part of that agenda wanting to get people's feedback on it. So I think it's fine to do it as like a draft. That makes sense to me. Thank you for bringing us to a logical place in that, Lauren. <laughs> it's 8.30 in the morning and I'm like, oh no. What? <laughs> I was like hitting on all cylinders. It's great. <laughs> so wait, can you repeat that so I can look at my calendar as you're talking about the dates? Is that- and see if it really does make sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I was thinking we could plan to present either April 13th or the next April meeting to council, use the 11th, just make clear that um, you're kind of, it's like a soft rollout where you're still gathering input both from the participants there and from creative discourse. And so like, we'll be back in touch with like the final plan, but so it's like a work in progress on the 11th. you know, hopefully like baked enough that we're getting able to get input, but clear that it hasn't been finalized or approved by council or anything. I, I mean, I don't know that it needs to be approved by council, but has been presented to council. And I think there's tons of time for y'all to, um, you know, you have a, I think you're scheduled. Okay. 9th, 23rd. No, it would be the sixth. So I think you could push um, any, updates you want to give to council to the last meeting in April, and then you'll have a meeting in between the committee on committees and then a council meeting to sort of discuss and finalize and then roll it out. Okay. Sounds good. That helps us too, um, as we're planning the, you know, agendas for the next few months, that helps us as well. Cool. Should we talk about this committee and committees meeting then? So I'm sorry, I just drafted up this very basic agenda, but I think these are the two parts that we had talked about was um, having there be a discussion about like what your committee is working on and how, you know, how you're incorporating equity and what questions do you have for other committees. I think it'd be great if we could spend a little bit of time thinking about what are those discussion questions and how do we want to frame that. And then the other piece is of having, you know, the overview of what CJAC is working on and the stipends um, process coming up and how are they accessed and why is it important and how to do the pre-survey and, you know, all of, all of those pieces, but kind of splitting it into those kind of two different sections. Um, I, I think that is, that is what we've talked about. And so when I, when I drafted it up, I originally put the overview of CJAC and the stipends first. And then when I was kind of like thinking through what it would look like, like move, you switch them. And so I'm not sure if that totally makes sense. Um, so just, I think like big picture reflections, reactions, anything like that. Okay. Um, and so then I think the other piece is the, for discussions, questions, I was just like, uh, hopefully we'll just like get people talking. I don't know what questions to ask. I don't know why I was so stuck. Um, but I'm just being like, what is your committee working on? How are you incorporating equity? What questions do you have for the other committees? You know, recognizing that we're going to have, you know, between 10 and 20 people there and, 
um, we have about 40 minutes to be able to like do this section of the agenda. You have an hour and a half altogether, but with like the welcome and intros and with the review next steps and just kind of splitting it in two, it's like not a lot of time. And so would we like one idea that I think I had was to have people prep one slide um, to be able to like, you know, keep it moving and, you know, kind of do the um, thing where you like the slide is going. And so it's like, when your time is up, your time is up. You can't ask questions. It's like not really a discussion. It's just a presentation. Um, or we could like split into small groups or, you know, there's lots of other ways that this could look. Um, and so I didn't know if folks had thoughts here. Thank you. Everyone has something to contribute here. Yeah. Would it be helpful for me to review what we did the first time around? Because the first time around, it was basically all this section. It was like we went over a little bit about CJAC, and then we did small groups, and then we did large group discussion, right? Or yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, so I we feel had like, sorry. We had two me. prompting questions really for the small group discussion. What equity issues are most relevant to your committee's work? and what equity issues is your committee currently engaged in um and that kind of got things going in the small groups and then everyone got back together and kind of shared out um in the full group um with some i think we we're paying particular attention to maybe things that didn't equity issues that didn't get brought up that were important to capture uh, I agree with Jeremy about reviewing um, because lots of the committees uh, told us they are already doing things about uh, DI, DEI. So maybe we can ask them, okay, you mentioned this, what happened since, you know, something like that. I think that's a good idea. And that would have been my suggestion because I think it's important that y'all are putting pressure on our other committees to actually do something instead of just talk about it, right? Like make sure that they're being equitable in the way that they're processing their policies or their recommendations. I think it would be important to sort of call them on that. So on yeah. like what they've been doing. Or they can say, oh, we talk about this, but we couldn't do anything since then we can say, okay, what happened? What was your, you know, what were your obstacles? How can we help you to overcome that? So maybe it might open other discussions for um, further collaborations. So how, can, you, can you repeat how you would frame that, those questions? So my, yeah, my original idea, um, we, uh, we met before and you talk about your activities um, related to DI. Could you please uh, repeat it? And can, can you tell us what kind of progress you had? Then according to their answers, we can ask, okay, what happened if they say, oh, we talk about this, but we couldn't do anything actually because of that. So, okay, how we can help you? What are the obstacles? How we can overcome together, you know, like more questions to make them talk about um, their ideas. Yeah, and then if they didn't come or if they can't remember or anything else, then we have those other questions of like, what equity questions are most relevant to your committee's work? What equity questions is your committee most engaged in? Yeah, and right. I'm sure other stuff's come up between the last meeting and now too, but we can have that be the prompt. Yeah. Helen, I like your, your suggestion about maybe digging into barriers to doing this work more uh, this time around. Um, I think that could give us some good information about how we can be a support or an advocate for what they think they want to be doing with equity issues. And does the, do the folks think having the discussion first and then going into the stipend work makes sense? 
like we'll be like cutting off the discussion essentially um is there an order i know this is yeah do the do the c jack and stipend overview first and then do the discussion cool i think that's the important information that y'all really need to get out so i'd put that first and then let people chat i'm looking for the minutes i sent out so we can resend that out so people know what they talked about right <laughs> So I'm just gonna put that in the chat, like the rework. Does that look great? Mm -hmm. I, I, I like the way, I like the flipping and um, Helen's suggestion for how to frame up the questions. I guess my only thing I'm wondering is like, like I like reflecting back on what people have done and it could be a chance for some of the committees might be like, we have something to report. And it could be like energizing, like, look, someone's like recognizing it, like we've been doing work or giving a chance to recognize the barriers. Like this feels very like backwards looking though. Like, is there a way to make it which I think is useful? Is it like, you know, something you've been working, either like some equity work you've done that you can share with the group or like a barrier you faced and then a project coming up that equity is going to be really important and you want to make sure we all are aware of it. But I, I know that there's not a lot of time and there's a ton of committees, so I don't know how to really or like leave with a like just like put in the chat something you're going to like some way to like capture or get people like thinking forward looking and not just like reflecting back. I wonder, Lauren, on that, um, there's a there's one kind of forward facing prompt that might be interesting. It's the kind of if I had a magic wand, what would what would I solve around equity issues within the, the kind of control of my committee, um, which might give us a sense of priorities that people have um, about things they really would hope to to work on in the future. Jeremy, do you mind like repeating that question? I, I wrote the essence of that question, but it did not come out as eloquent. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, so the, I think the prompt would be, okay, imagine you, okay, you have a magic wand and within that power, what equity issue would you kind of um, fix, so to speak, if you could, that's within the, the control of what your committee focuses on. So I think the, it's more of a visioning kind of question because it's not, you know, what is feasible necessarily or what is um, doable in the short term. It, it's, a, it's a bit larger than that, like, you know, getting that kind of hoping and dreaming. And so I think it sounds like overall, keeping this all in one big group and just being able to keep things moving. Great. We're going to send this out ahead of time so they have some time to think about it. Is that the plan? Yeah, it's a great idea. So my, uh, once y'all had sort of finalized an agenda, I was going to send out the actual invite to everyone. Um, I wasn't certainly going to put anything on anyone's calendar until that was done. So I can do that this week. And you do want this via Zoom, right? As opposed to a hybrid or in person or. Okay. We have not talked about that. Well, last time we talked about it, we were like, we can't do anything this summer because Omicron is everywhere all the time. It's just like whiplash, whiplash. Like. <laughs> 
Does anyone have any thoughts on that? You're definitely not hybrid, because that yeah, is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one or the other, but I'd go for Zoom. Yeah. Zoom's more equitable, yeah, or accessible. Yeah. And then we can mute people still. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay. All right. So this the, the question this because it's a public meeting, it, it goes out, there's a general uh, this information that this is going to happen. See, that's the thing. It's not actually a meeting of anybody. It's a meeting. It's I mean, it could be a public meeting if you want it to. I don't think your last one was advertised as such because it's not a committee meeting. Well, there's no there's no quorum I, of anyone except y'all. So it was just yeah. norm, warned as a CJAC meeting. I'm not advocating for that. I just wanted to know if it, if it was if it had to be warned as a because we are all city committees. If it had to be um, warned as a as a public meeting. No, I will probably warn it as like a CJAC special meeting because you're the only quorum that will be there. Like y'all yeah, last time. Sorry. The last time we just had folks register to be able to come. And I remember that caused all sorts of problems and like tech snafus. And so I think we're just not, let's not mess with that. This right. It's like it was more like we wanted to like know what committees people were from because we'd be going in small groups and all that. And for this meeting, I think we just dive right in, right? No registration. And we can record it to share it with committees who can't come. Is that okay? Cool. Yep. Um, should we talk about roles? I'm like, does anyone want to hold? I think we should all hold some role in the meeting for like, you know, facilitation and overview and, and sharing. And so if anyone has any, any one of these pieces that they're most excited about. By all means. I mean, I can play a part in any facilitation that's needed. I'll just just let me know. Be there to take notes and be your mute person. <laughs> Have the power. Yeah. <laughs> We're not doing breakout sessions, is that right? We're do this is all plenary. All right, that's fine. All together. Then, um, no, I don't think there's necessarily we don't we all need to, to have a role, but um, if the, if there's not going to be breakout, then we don't need to have people facilitating small groups. Right. And, I, and I think I'm okay with having fewer people do things and if there's more to do you know can you can you lay out what, what else you think needs to be done and then we can decide if we need to one or, one or another of us needs to take a role in that yeah i think maybe the i think the roles are like you know doing the welcome and introductions introducing you know who we are and the social and economic justice advisory committee um, doing the overview of the stipends is another role, I think, um, and kind of going over what the process is going to look like and the survey, taking questions for that. And then I think like another role is, you know, running the discussion um, and making and like having people, you know, opening, going over the questions and then maybe another person like to like set the timer and to like move us along and call on the next person. Um, and then the yeah, last one is really the you know, wrapping up the review next steps, like what, if there are people who are like, I'm going to connect on this, like capturing that. Um, and then just doing like a, you know, quick eval and close at the end. So I think it makes sense. Like I can do like the welcome grounding overview of CJAC piece at the beginning, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. sure. I'll be the timekeeper. Do you need a timekeeper? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So who's going to talk about the stipends? I'm happy to help 
with that, like either do it or if we want to pair up on it or something. If there's any specific like finance things that people have to do, I'll, um, I'll discuss that. Um, do you want me to facilitate the, the discussion portion? Sounds great. And then Helen, can you do the closing? Reviewing next steps to the eval, all that? Yeah, of course. Cool. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry I keep just pasting this into the chat because it's really annoying to read because it's not like formatted, but I think those are the pieces. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So should we each prep our own individual pieces? Or like if, you know, for, I'm thinking like for the um, stipend piece, it'd be helpful to like have some slides to be like, you know, here's the numbers, here's what we're looking at, here's the link. Um, and probably for CJAC overview too. Should we just each do those and then kind of can compile them stuff like all together? Cool. Awesome. Okay, we've got about 10 minutes left. Anything else of the committee and committee's planning? Um, I don't know, but we feel like we're great. Got nothing else on our agenda. Ha ha ha, famous last words. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, jinx to myself. Okay. Um, but yeah, anyone have any um, yeah, report backs from other related city committees and council other than, hey, yo, we got our budget. Um, yeah, Cameron. So um, just so everyone knows, uh, I've told you before that the leadership team is for the city is working on getting lockers uh, for folks experiencing homelessness. We are presenting that uh, not tonight, uh, but the following council meeting. Um, I think we've worked out the implementation plan We've worked out where they're going to go. We've worked out which ones we want. The um, DRC has approved it for behind the rec center. So we're looking for council's um, feedback and buy-in on that. Um, and that will be going to the homelessness task force next week for their feedback. So just letting you know that that is moving forward. It's a big deal for us. So that will be the city committee meeting on March 23rd. All right. Yeah, the city council meeting on the 23rd. Yeah, great. Thanks. Super pumped. Curious, how many lockers will that include, Cameron? It was two sets of eight, so 16 big ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, I think that's a big deal. And did they part of the discussion for a long time now. Yeah, I know. Did they figure out the lighting back there? Yes. Because that was a question. Okay. Yes, we figured out the lighting. Mm -hmm. So um, there's two. It doesn't really matter. But we're going to have motion detector lighting shining on the lockers um, so that if anyone approaches them, the light turns on and it will be mm -hmm. angled away from any housing or other structures around the mm -hmm. rec center. Cool. And then any update on the um, public restroom committee? I know, you know, like that was, it's been over a year now. I, yeah. So just if there is any um, timeline or conversation update there. Yeah. Well, there is some conversation. So the homelessness task force asked council for funding and they were approved for 15,000 to pay a consultant to tell us right. what would be best served. Like what kind of structure do we need? What does it need to have in it? Right. So if we need bathrooms, what else do we need in addition to that? Right. So we're not trying to build a bathroom and then go back and build another thing like a day shelter or something. Right. As a separate entity. So um, we're going to see, you You know, we're in a place where we don't know what we don't know other than we need a bathroom. Right. So yeah. hopefully that consultant will help move that conversation forward. 
cool. And there was money, like part of the budget had designated like a chunk of ARPA funds, um, of the city's ARPA funds for that. And I know that there's been at least lobbying going on to try to convince the state legislature to invest because Montpelier is our state capital. So we think the state should be helping support this project too, financially. Um, so I, I don't know if that will bear any fruit, but I know conversations are going on there. Great. And then any other, yeah, self-education, learning report backs to share as well. I've like stopped reading books. That's my, I'm just like, I have a stack of, of hard uh, non, uh, nonfiction books that I'm just like, oh man, I just can't, can't. That's it's very silly is what I'm trying to say. Okay. <laughs> I have a recommendation because I'm in the same, I'm having a hard time taking in information right now. <laughs> but I did a few weeks ago, I read Rebecca Solnit's Hope in the Dark, um, which she first wrote in like 2003, 2004, and it's been updated a few times. Um, and I found it a really encouraging book to read in this particular moment of craziness. Um, in particular, there's a historical perspective there that's just, you know, reminds me of like, oh, what it was like to live and be paying attention, like, right after 9-11 and the Iraq war and Afghanistan war. Um, so you get, I, I found it comforting to get a sense like, yeah, things are really messed up, but they've often been messed up in other times and people are doing really good work and there is hope to be found um, in different pockets. So. It was a it was an uplifting read for the most part. If you need that kind of thing right now, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah. Any other business? I think. Our next meeting is, um, sorry, I just clicked away from my calendar. Next meeting is gonna be March 23rd, right before the city council meeting. Um, and on that agenda, we're going to uh, do what? Hopefully get a report back from um, the uh, Creative Discourse review and any steps there. Um, maybe do some work time on the committee and committees planning, but like also that, yeah, we can maybe, maybe we can have a short meeting and then we can just have it be a work time to work on that, right? Are, are there other other pieces? I mean, we have other like bigger picture things that we could be tackling, like outreach to immigrant and refugee groups, um, proactive educational events, um, communicating our work to the community. Um, but I think maybe waiting until after the April, um, committee and committees would would make sense to do those, but up for whatever else. Any other thoughts on next agenda? Sorry, I spun my wheels there. Um, I just have a, a note. I'm going to be traveling for a while, so you oh, right. won't see me. Um, I'll be gone from March 20th to April 7th. So I'll be, I'll be off the map for that time. Have a great trip. Cool. Um, all right. Well, see you all, see you all then, except for Jeremy, who's gonna <laughs> be having fun. All right, see you all. Bye, Bye. thank you. Bye -bye.